Have you ever been that kid who doesn't speak? Surprisingly, although I'm 93% extroverted on the Myers-Briggs, I was quiet, reserved, and scared as a child. And since I had that, that bullying, that trauma, that like being so lonely and sad for that time, I was extremely attracted to Mr. Yan Jan, the man here, who specializes in, well, that kid who grew up and got a hat and a beard. <laughs> Jan, thank you for coming today. Yeah, that's me. Um, I also used to be a very shy kid. I often describe it as the person in class you probably didn't even notice was there mm. because I did not have the courage to raise my hand, speak up, be the center of attention. It still uh, gives me shivers when I think about the times mm. when I was young. I feel like now I've gotten some skills to be more comfortable in those situations. Mm. But yeah, I I do know exactly how it feels. So when I'm working with groups, when I'm designing workshops experiences, I make sure that I design it in the way that those people don't feel like they're being put on the spot. Mm. You know, I got goosebumps when you, 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 you said that, cause I can visualize, I can visualize that kid in the corner. Cause we all know who that kid was when we were a child in each of our classes. And it was awkward. It was awkward mm -hmm. to talk to that kid because that kid, no offense, to you or me, we were awkward because we didn't know how to deal with it. And then you said the very important word, which is why you have a thriving business, is now you have the skills to be able to take that space. So can you talk to me a little bit more about like, well, maybe a personal story or just what you focus on? How do you give those kids the skills? Like it's it's not it's not on us to teach you those skills as your colleagues, right? It's on you to learn skills and for the environment to be safe. So could you share a bit about that? Yeah, and I think that's exactly, you You already talked about two different approaches to this, right? So yeah. one way would be to give the people, the quiet people, the skills to engage more. Although not all quiet people are the same, there's lots of different reasons why somebody might be quiet or not engaging, and that might be different one day to the other. So we could uh, give them the skills, or what I've been focusing on a lot more is give people who lead groups who hold the space for a group of people uh, more tools how to ramp up the engagement gradually and don't like push people into the deep end of the pool without teaching them how to swim mm -hmm. right we want everyone to be um ready to engage and unfortunately mm -hmm. or fortunately anybody any anything that you do you can't force people to be engaged mm -hmm. right you can always make only make the invitation and then hope that they're ready to take you up on it. This I love the word engage because the name of my company, if you look behind under my chin, it's called Engage. Yep. And it's so hard to remember what I was like back when I was 12 and had no friends and read like a book a day. You know, like I remember the feeling in my body of being scared and not trusting people because they're going to bully me and be mean to me. And that stayed with me. And then I did lots of therapy and now I'm over that. And now I'm like, hey world. And so I, I healed that fear. So creating that safe space is for me as a therapist is like creating like a therapeutic almost energy where everything is welcome. And that is not trained in facilitator school, which doesn't exist or in coaching school, which kind of doesn't exist because everyone's a coach. So we have to take it upon ourselves to learn what you're sharing here. It has to be a conscious effort, not just like I followed my favorite high school teacher or what's yeah, that responsibility? And, I, and the interesting thing is when I was start when I started to run workshops and lead experiences, I like one of the things I did a lot was in Toronto when I lived in Canada, I used to host these monthly campfire conversations, which was basically a space for adults to come together and make new friends especially if you're new to the city, if you don't know anybody there yet. I designed these uh, exercises and experiences and conversations to help you meet somebody, not get stuck in small talk and go deeper quickly, but mm. still not like not too fast. And like trying to figure out that right speed, of course, was different mm. with every group. Yeah. Um, but there I, I learned a lot of the skills that I'm now applying to any other workshop training that, mm -hmm. that I'm designing because I, like if you can see the campfire behind me, that's kind of how everything is, uh, like I see everything as the process of building a campfire. Mm -hmm. If I 
had a big, actually, I do have a big log. I still have it here. I just came back <laughs> from vacation. I'm like, still need to see where I have all my props. But <laughs> if I had a big log, even bigger than this, and I try to start a campfire with this yeah. Yeah. and just held a lighter underneath it, yeah. nothing would happen, yeah. right? And to me, often when I see people kind of going too fast, too quickly in a session, it's, okay, we're going to do an icebreaker. Everybody has to stand in the middle of the circle and sing a song. Or yeah. something as crazy as that yeah. is the that's way too big for especially the people who don't want to be at the center of attention yeah. uh, or the people who don't see the point of why are we doing this anyway mm -hmm. so we need to gradually start with something that uh mm -hmm. ignites the spark really easily get our tinder mm -hmm. our paper add our a little tinder. stick on top right Wait, is that why tinder is called tinder because it's supposed to spark something bigger yep I, I'm pretty sure that's why it's called like that. I just thought it was a stupid name. Tinder. That's a good name now. Isn't that interesting? Perception. <laughs> wow. When you, you know, like I hear what you're saying, and I'm, I'm very selfish, guys. Whoever's watching, you guys all know, Dan, I invited all of our colleagues to come watch this um, mm -hmm. now in the replay. I tend to put the big log there. I start with mm -hmm. the big log. And I figure like, hey, they'll be fine. <laughs> and I have to learn how to stop doing that. And because I'm so fascinated by it by now, uh, these little habits that we have to change as facilitators, not just like, well, the, it's called the icebreaker, right? And you have revolutionized the word icebreaker and changed it. Tell me about your intention to change that scene. Yeah, uh, I mean, when I hear the word icebreaker, I literally visualize a person coming into a room with a big sledgehammer and a group being covered in ice like they can't move and they don't have a choice but just to sit there and hope that they don't get hurt by the person trying to break the ice with the hammer. Oh. It's very violent. It's like I feel like more things can go wrong with that approach, um, which is why I... Uh, I think of, again, building this campfire that melts the ice. Uh -huh. so it's a more gradual process. It takes more time. Like building trust with anybody with a group takes time. It's not this mm -hmm. instantaneous thing that you can do like the kind of breaking visual does. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I started calling it the, the art of melting the ice or ice melters. Had you heard of that concept from someone or did you, is that your thing? I might have read the word ice melters somewhere once mm -hmm. and it kind of just like resonated so deeply with me and I already was talking about like building the campfire that I just put two and two together. I'm like, okay, okay this, this is it. Cool. When you compare the two words, of course, ice melter, it's going to take off. I'm sure all the kids will be trending saying it. <laughs> it's, it's the right word. And, and it's funny. It's like the vision. Now I can't get rid of the image either. And now I see myself doing it and I don't like it. <laughs> There's like ice flying in the poor introvert's eye. And I'm like, dance and they're like kill me and i'm like dance more right like yeah i i mean there is a time where i feel like you can do those types of activities yeah. at the start but i don't think it's with people that don't know each other or a group that doesn't have, hasn't built that trust with each other and one of the best examples is maybe um i'm a completely different person depending on the environment or the group that i'm in if I'm in a group of like friends or people that I know well, or if I'm, I know I'm facilitating with a group and I, I feel very comfortable in kind of the topic and holding that space, I'm a lot more confident. I'll take a lot more risks. Or like if I'm on an improv stage and I'm doing improv games, very different than, um, let's say, a uh, a birthday party of a friend that I don't know that well and I don't know anyone else, I'm going to be a lot more hesitant yeah. to to come out of my shell. Yeah. Although, uh, like when I was younger, people always called me or, or said about me, um, still waters are deep. And um, I still think, yes, that, that, that really resonates. Like, I love to have deep conversations. I'm not mm -hmm. a fan of small talk. But mm -hmm. in certain situations, it feels like small talk is the only thing that other people want to do. So I either need to take a risk and ask mm -hmm. something more deeply or share something mm 
mm-hmm. deeper to kind of open up the way mm-hmm. um, or my preferred way. Somebody else facilitates it and is like, okay, everybody, we're going to do this activity and there are certain rules and everybody's participating. So there's less pressure for one individual to, to have to do all of the, the hard legwork. Hmm. So for those of you watching, um, Jen and I met at the Applied Improvisation Network. And so when he just said, everyone's participating, the rules of improv, which Amy Poehler is doing a master class on it, there's not many rules, but what would you say are have inspired you in this with your expression, inspiration with um, improv for the equality? Yeah, that, that's that's a really good question. Now I wish I had the the rules of improv oh. to to review, but I I would say that one of the like one of the things I love the most about improv is you can't control what what comes your way. Like I I often talk about improv as almost like a life philosophy, where mm-hmm. if something happens in your life, it's like you can't rewind the clock and go back and change it. You mm-hmm. have to accept that this is the offer that you've been given and then, okay, what are we going to do now? Yeah. What are we going to do with it? And um, I'm not sure how that relates to to my yeah. my other kind of work, but that's the one thing that I love the most about. Yeah. Kind of I'll tell you this, the rules of improv, improv, and then you'll be able to answer it a little better. But uh, so what we were taught or told is there, there's really not really <laughs> any rules except for um, make your partner look good. Yep, yeah, that's and a equal one. speaking time. It's like you do a sentence, they contribute. And that's that, that yes, you take the offer. Mm-hmm. You don't just say yes to the offer. You want to go climb a mountain? Yes. Do you want to have lunch? Yes. You add to it. So it's two people contributing to build something together. If it's just one person, it's a monologue, and that's never a conversation. So when you say everyone is included, you have to – make sure that the exercise includes them, not just hoping that they'll jump into a role that's uncomfortable for them, but they're included. You're not really included if it's a football game and you suck at football. You're not actually included. You just haven't been verbally unincluded. And I think that happens a lot. We're Mm -hmm. like, okay, all of you extroverts can play and the introverts can uncomfortably watch all of us. You're all included though. I'm guilty of that. And so I, I say it's just easier, right? Because yeah, introverts like, can complain, <laughs> right? If, if, if I think of one of those, the, the most, the scariest experience I've had, I want to say, since we met, like probably a couple of days after we met, was uh, being on stage with Colin Mockery at oh, okay. AIN, like one oh, of yeah. the improv scene. gods. Uh, in a scene and he did the make the other person look good like to the extreme like he is so good at including every single person even if you're like oh i'm hesitant not sure what to do like he will include you some way that makes sense and again makes you look good and that's uh i think also a skill any leader should train i was i was so aware of that once i got off stage and started processing all of that because because I had hesitated so much that in the last scene, two people like me and another person stepped forward and it was supposed to be like a two person scene. So now there were three of us and I didn't really know what to do. And very quickly, um, I don't remember exactly, it was Colin and me broke up with the third person like in our love triangle. (laughs) And that was the scene. Like immediately I was included, not as like a bystander or a third wheel, like we were love triangle because there were three of us, not just a pair and one outsider. Ah, Beautiful. That's so beautiful. Well, I'm super excited that you're coming because I was waiting, guys, for a gent to say, yes, I'm coming to the Change Days um, Unconference. It's the 16th edition of this Berlin Berlin Festival, and Yana and I saw each other there in December in in Berlin with Olger. And I said, if Jen doesn't come, I got to do this topic because... I need to fix this in my practice. And I've been trying hard for the last year to really incorporate it, but I need, I, I need help. I need more tips. I need more habits. I need more. And I want to see you do it better. I saw you do it with Yunko and um, Lucy and I, we came, we met at your event in Berlin the day yep. before change days happened. And that was lovely. I have a nice video of us um, throwing our feedback and our compliments and our criticisms, if there were any, um, at you in the middle 
Tell me about yeah. that exercise and what it feels like to get everyone anonymously giving you feedback. Yeah, so I actually got this activity. I also need to give credit to the Liberating Structures user yeah. group in Stuttgart. Liberating Good. Structures is another kind of mm -hmm. set of activities and tools to kind of equalize how people participate mm -hmm. in conversations and discussions. Mm -hmm. And they started doing this where everybody at the end of the session gets a white piece of paper, they write down all of their feedback, they crumble it up. And then at the same time, you throw it kind of at the facilitators or around the room and create this snowball fight, uh -huh. which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but then I think this is where that type of activity gets really powerful. Everybody picks up somebody else's paper and reads it out first for themselves. And then we, depending on time, you might hear a few people read it out aloud. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a very quick way to get anonymous thoughts verbalized and having a group realize, hey, we're mm -hmm. like, depending on the, the prompt or the question, if it's not just feedback, but for example, um, what's something you worry about the most in your life mm -hmm. right now? Like I've done that with with that uh, type of question, and then people read all of them out and realize, hey, we're not that different. We all have similar worries. We're actually much more connected. Mm. Um, and to me, that is one of those things that creates maybe the most powerful feeling, which is feeling uh, the feeling of I'm not alone. Yeah, I just had an image of it at our event where I'm already visualizing like 50 of us, 60 of us. We're 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 about 25 right now. No, we're about 28 right now in Barcelona, October 25th, 27th. And I just like thought of a question and it's such like a, a deep question. And I'm like, what if we started sessions without the small talk, without the superficiality, if we just started like very strong and I know your workshops do start like that. And I really want to have that energy at ours because I want to connect. Oh, what does that say? I'm on a small talk detox. <laughs> I'll bring some stickers. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard because the normal way is the normal way. And to be different and to include people um, and to have everyone feel safe and seen and contributing and not take, you know, it's, it's, that's the real role of a facilitator. And so I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to your session because it's going to be the art of facilitation. I know we're not calling it such a grandiose name, but I really think that this is an aspect that very few of us are trained in, uh, like none of us are trained in it and we need to be trained in it. So I, I see a very bright future for you and I'm incredibly grateful and so excited that all the people that are coming are going to be able to participate and met a conversation with you after your workshop to learn more about how you did it. Yeah, I, I am very excited to do this workshop with another group. Um, I've done it at the Applied Improvisation Networks conference in Prague um, oh, yeah. last month or a version of it. So I'm like already yeah. iterating, okay, yeah. new uh, new things to try. Um, it's going to be super experiential. Like I'm not just going to stand at the front and give you like, here's the 10 things you need to do. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to have you kind of engage and participate in a bunch of things and at the end ask you, so which, what, which are the 10 things that you've learned? Wow. Um, and then hopefully they'll match up with the 10 things that I want to share. <laughs> and if people do want to read the 10 things that you should do or the 20 or the five or the one, how can they read about you or read you? So, yeah, I am writing a book called Ice Melters right now. Ooh. And in the process, I'm sending out a email every Monday. So there's one going out today. And if anybody's interested, you can sign up at icemeltersbook.com. <laughs> I love the title. So simple no, and <laughs> so clear. Icemelters.com. Icemeltersbook.com. Yeah, icemelters.com, unfortunately, is taken. I try yeah. to buy the yeah. domain, but it's not what you think. It's about a product that melts, that actually melts physical <laughs> ice uh, in your driveway so you don't have to um, worry about sense, slipping. Though. Yeah, love it. I love it. Great. Love it. Love you. Love the hat. I love the fireplace. Love that you're coming. I'm going to love your friends who are coming because I met a couple of people through your event in Berlin. And we met again in Berlin when I was there for the Play 14. Do you know Play 14? Uh, I heard about it. haven't attended. Yeah. Okay. It's lovely. The whole event is open space. 
Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who are considering coming down to Barcelona for October 25th, we're doing two open space sections, which means you pitch your idea in front of all of us. You have different spaces of the room and open space. You don't have a dedicated small room just for yourself. And people are allowed to, encouraged to, to float and to buzz around and to share ideas from that session to that session. So it's about flexibility as a as a facilitator. It's about being where you are, being with who is there and not worrying about what's happening. And if one person shows up, that's who is supposed to be there. And if 200 show up, <laughs> well, they better have bought tickets. Okay, if you're that popular. <laughs> uh, and that's just what it is. So there's a real like open flowing energy. And I think that's along the lines of meet people where they are and create a safe space for everyone. So I'm excited to do that with you. Yeah, I love open spaces and can't wait to see you in person. I just booked my tickets uh, over the weekend. Yay! So now it's officially happening. We did this video, we told everyone. Um, now I need to share this and make sure that all of my friends who are nearby will yeah. buy their tickets too. Hey, we're in Europe. We're not in Toronto. It's Toronto outside that window. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell people from North America to come, but it's just so far away, nine hours. But Europeans, hello. To you Toronto no Germans. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the interview. And um, yeah, we'll see each other soon. Yeah. Tschüssi. Bye. Bye.